This is your warning. This video contains content that might not be appropriate for all audiences. Hey guys, so we are back to the boat. It might not have seemed that long that we were here for you guys, but it was five weeks that we were away. So we are super pumped to be back. <laughs> We got back yesterday on the cheapest Spirit Airline flight we could find. We've already gotten to it. Spencer is painting the squares that the stands have left behind because they moved them. And then we did some provisioning and I'm washing all the fruits and vegetables. And it looks like we're going to get put in the water tomorrow at 11. Yay! So I washed everything and now we're going to put it away and then Spencer's going to finish painting. There's a break between rain clouds which was really lucky for us because it's been raining non-stop. Um, which was good in one respect, I got to fill the water tanks with our water catcher which is sweet. So we're almost all ready to go. We just need one more trip to town I think to provision. We need to fill our propane tank and obviously we need to be put in water. <laughs> um. There was a lot of concern about the center board being bound up um, and not being heavy and I'm um, setting some records straight here. Um, one person was correct about the fair leads kind of being all fucked up and goofy and once we straighten that out that helped make it a little bit easier to lift. Um, it's not bound up, it is in fact heavy as fuck, I looked on the plans and there's no purchase or lack there of purchase. It just goes with the sheaves and then back to the wench. So once we straighten things out, it does lift easier. We're not going to lose the keel. Don't worry. One thing that we should clarify is our boat is not really a centerboard. It's a lifting keel or a swing keel. So it's super goddamn heavy. And it is, in fact, just really, really weighted. It is a poor design. I'll give you that. But I don't think we're in any danger of losing any uh, keel issues, guys. It goes down really easy. I spoke to multiple owners of boats that are similar to ours and uh, they have similar complaints about the uh, weight of their boards. Uh, it has been resolved by multiple different uh, ways. Uh, hydraulic presses have been installed to jack things up and jack things down. Most of, the, most of the French boats do that. Some people add more purchase, some people put a power winch on there, and then some just forget about it. That's what I'm going to do. We need to make decisions on what's more important to us and what's actually a safety issue and what's just wasting time and rebuilding things and so we're gonna leave that the way it is we're gonna focus on other things and I'm gonna go sail the boat because that's why I got a sailing boat to go sailing I did tell Spencer that we've actually reached our asthmatope of work as well because we've been working for five weeks on cruise ships before that we've been working on this boat and for two months and we sailed it a little bit but not really and part of it is at some point you just have to pull the trigger and go sailing which I is mean, what we need to do. Stuff's gonna be broken on it. Yeah, stuff's gonna be broken. Nothing is putting us in danger. I actually installed an extra bilge pump this time. Yes, thanks to Dominic, we have two bilge pumps. So we have three bilge pumps. Three bilge pumps. We got so many goddamn bilge pumps. Yes, so thank you. The boat's been this way for 30 years. I don't know if I need to be changing shit right now. I mean, maybe at the first, like, first couple months, I maybe we should go use it. You know? I don't know. Am I crazy? And that's what we're gonna go do! Today we get put in the water and we're hoping to leave to Belize by Thursday. Yep. Breakdown in Belize! Ooh. Yeah. So we did not get put in the water and so today I am going to clean the mask and Brina's weak little arms can't hoist me up so we're gonna try a new system that I watched on YouTube about using ascenders that I'm not particularly confident in. So Brian is going to have a second belay line on me so I can work my way up and then my line's too fat for me to use my descending deals so then Brian will lower me down. That's the plan. Can you say why we didn't get put in the water because it just sounds like we... Oh yeah, we didn't get put in the water um, because it rains here and apparently they can't run diesel equipment when it rains. Also the uh, dude who runs a lift, which is the only guy in the yard that can do it, uh, has two days off, lucky him, and so we get to hang out in the yard some more.
Oh my God, Bryce, you are not going to believe this. Well, you can't say it did hold up. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, what do you think of that? Um, for those of you that don't know, our first season on Cambio, we got stranded and Spencer decided to build a dinghy in the worst way possible. Are you kidding me? This dinghy's been sitting in the rain for six years now. And then we gave it to one of the guys that worked on our boat because it was awful. Yeah, it was a pile of shit. And look I, what we I did. Didn't, in my first boat, I built and designed, and you can see it clearly. <laughs> Look at the name. I wonder what they've been using it for. I don't know. It's heavy as fuck. Like, the beer needs to just drag shit around. I gotta say, man, she held us pretty good. That is amazing. I mean, I'm still pretty proud of it. <laughs> Look at it. They did take off your extended transom. Yeah, well, half of that broke off first time we used it so she's near stock they have it like everything else in Guatemala they tune up they like this you might see a cut this could be a mold <laughs> look at this bow <laughs> we would get so wet <laughs> I was like walking through the yard and I just turned and I was like, like what the oh that? my this is my God. First, first attempt at the outboard bracket and then we build it higher that's a cutting board <laughs> that I bought Este barco. Este es de Jaime? Si. Pero él ha hecho esto. Ajá. En Belize. Es horrible. Yeah. Horrible con el barco. Y este... Mucho uso acá para... What do they use it for? Para lavar lazos. Oh, to down. clean the lines. Ajá. Para lavar lazos. Oh, clean them. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't even use... No, es una barco. No. <laughs> es una... Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> They're yep. like, as a ship, it sucks. <laughs> Yeah. But as a giant bucket. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Yeah, you designed a better bucket. I fucking dare you. Oh, can I use it to wash my lines? <laughs> I don't think he got that I built it because I don't think he like thinks anyone built it. Like it's just a piece of shit in the yard. <laughs> hey B. Hey. Uh so because we're in Guatemala and we have guat tummy. Uh, we may have used the composting toilet a little bit. Can we um, clarify who we is? I did. It was an emergency. The one thing that we have uh, quickly discovered though, because the ladder is on the back of the boat, turns out the exhaust for the composting toilet is right at face level when you board the sugar scoop. I'm all cleaned up after cleaning out the head. It's 9.20. They were supposed to put us in the water at 9. It's a Latin America 9B. They are here today, as opposed to yesterday, so. I've seen them. That's good. I got a haircut. Guat cut! Yeah, it needs to be styled right now, so it's a little floppy on one side, but when you get it all, it's kind of a side fade that goes across the whole thing. It's like a pre come over before I go bald. It's worth two bucks, I think.
you didn't hear me, but I was talking to that guy. Yeah. And guess what? He has for sale. Why are guys talking to you? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, vaccine of the coronavirus. No. For 150, I think you said. Yeah. A drone. What kind of drone? Again? DJI. Sick. Yeah. Really. 150 bucks. All right. He watches the videos. He said, "I've never seen drone footage. Do you guys want a drone?" Yeah, I do have a drone. <laughs> All right, sick. Is that cool? It's badass, all right. Yeah. Look at the new equipment. So Taylor on Cattails sold us that for super cheap, and now we have a drone.